Brasil, olá você aí de casa! Hoje vocês vão ver a entrevista que eu fiz com o Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel! Ele veio aqui pra CCXP pra divulgar o um novo filme dele que se chama Triplo X, que é um daqueles filmes super de ação, correria, e carros e pessoas lutando, aquelas coisas. E eu tive a oportunidade de fazer uma entrevista exclusiva com ele, porque eu fui a única pessoa da internet que teve 10 minutos pra falar com ele, o que é bem raro, geralmente são 4, 5 minutos. Mas durante a entrevista aconteceu uma coisa que eu não esperava. O Vin Diesel é, ficou apaixonado por mim. Eu, eu falo dessa forma porque ele começou meio que a me cantar no meio da entrevista, falar que eu era bonita e ele interrompeu a entrevista três vezes pra falar disso. Então vocês vão ver no vídeo que eu tava rindo, assim, completamente desconfortável, eu não sabia muito bem o que fazer, eu só ria, só ria porque eu tava numa situação muito delicada, mas a verdade é que eu não gostei disso, assim na hora eu não soube reagir, mas vocês vão ver que eu tava desconfortável, que não foi legal, que ele interrompeu o meu trabalho enfim, eu admiro muito o trabalho dele mas esse dia eu fiquei um pouco decepcionada nada com a atitude dele, porque eu tava muito ansiosa pra entrevistá-lo, eu tinha preparado muitas e muitas perguntas e eu nem consegui fazer todas porque ele ficou interrompendo pra falar de mim e da minha beleza, que não era um assunto né, do vídeo. Eu vou ainda fazer um outro vídeo falando disso tudo, por agora eu só queria comentar isso pra vocês terem um contexto melhor da entrevista então aproveitem a entrevista e depois a gente fala mais sobre isso. Um beijo! So you like Brazilian funk? Yeah, I do like Brazilian funk. It's your third time here in Brazil, right? It's my third time here. Where have you been here? Rio. Rio. It's my first time in Sao Paulo. How you like it? I love it. Great. We love having you here. I love being here. <laughs> so I found out that your real name is Mark. What the guy? Say something. Someone say something. No, never heard of it. What? What no. happened there? Marco, Marco. Marco Vincenzo, Marco Vincenzo. Pero tu sabes. What was your first acting job? My first acting job, I was seven years old. And I was... I had a gang in the streets of New York. Of six-year-olds, seven-year-olds, and eight-year-olds. And I went into this this theater and we were vandalizing this theater. And the woman that run the, that ran the theater named Crystal came out. And she said, if you want to play here, you come here every day at 4 p.m. I'll give you $20 a week. She paid you. Learn your lines and do this play called The Dinosaur Door. And that's what I did. You were a bouncer in New York while you were studying acting? I was a bouncer for 10 years in New York. 10 years? 10 years, yeah. And did you have lots of fights? In so the many clubs? fights. It's so dangerous, right? It's Working. very dangerous in New York City. People, a lot of my friends were killed. A lot of my friends died while we were, while we were working. It was very dangerous, but I was able to incorporate that into my acting and into my life experience so that when I did movies, I could have, um, I added something to the characters because of that experience. Your first movie that, that you did, you wrote, produced, directed, acted, anything else, a multifacial? Yeah, I was, also, I was also the chef. So I made pasta every <laughs> day for everybody. That was called multifacial. That was back, that went to Cannes in 1995. I don't know that people know that about you. you have I don't this think a lot of people know that. I don't think a lot of people know that my career started because I had been acting since I was a kid. And by the time I was 27, I had been acting for 20 years. And I didn't get any roles, I didn't get, I wasn't breaking, breaking into the industry. And so I decided to become a director. And I directed a film called Multifacial. And then I directed a film called Strays that went to Sundance. But when I directed Multifacial, Steven Spielberg saw the short film. And because he saw the short film, he had the writers write a character for me in Saving Private Ryan. And then the rest was history. And I heard you say in another interview that Tom Hanks is your mentor? Tom Hanks, when, when, when I did Saving Private Ryan, was very much a mentor. He told me what it was going to be like to be a movie star. And before that, I didn't know any movie stars. But Tom Hanks was the first one, and he, he God, you're so beautiful. God, she's so beautiful, man. <laughs> am I right or wrong? Look at her. Thank you. How am I supposed to do this interview? Look at yeah. this woman. 
Tell me your story. She's so beautiful. <laughs> Konyo, man. Talk to me, baby. Tell me I'm your blushing. story. <laughs> Tell me your Let's get out of here. Let's go. Let's, let's go have lunch. My God, I love her. Look how beautiful she is. Thank you. God, wow. Man. So, Tom oh, Hanks? Wow, man. Ah, yeah, Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks? Tom great Hanks. guy. He was a great guy. And he he kind of told me what it was going to be like to be a movie star. And uh, I'll always love Tom Hanks. And I'll always love, um, I'll always love the, the wisdom that he gave me very early on in my career. You guys announced Fast and Furious 10 already? And you were saying like Private Ryan, and then you're like doing a tenth movie of a franchise. Have you ever imagined you would be doing something like that? Never, never. When when we did the first Fast and Furious, we were over in London, and we were releasing the first Fast and Furious back in 2001. We had already released it in America, and we were going over to to Europe to introduce the film to the European audience. And I remember telling the studio at the time, don't make another Fast and Furious. <laughs> no, we have to make another one. I said, no, don't make another one. I'm not, if, if, if Rebel Without a Cause had a sequel, it wouldn't be a classic. Now you guys have a classic, don't make another one. But they didn't listen to me. <laughs> um, they tried to get me to do the second one and I didn't want to do it. And then... Um, How they convinced you? They convinced me because uh, they came to me and said, um, every time we give you a script, then you say no to the sequel. So you produce it and you work with the writer and you come up with the future of the Fast franchise as a producer and as a saga visionary. And I said, okay. And then um, I started working with the writer And the rest was history. I found out that you are a nerd like me. You love Dungeons and Dragons. I'm anything like you because I love you. <laughs> But <laughs> I'm anything like you because I love so, you. <laughs> guys, really? Look how beautiful she is. <laughs> you guys think this is a joke. How am I supposed to sit over here when I'm looking at such beauty? Come on, guys. She's beautiful. She's so beautiful. I'm in love. Mm -hmm. I'm in love with the interview. <laughs> So you play Dungeons and Dragons. I played Dungeons and Dragons for many, 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 many years. In fact, um, Gary Gygax, you know who Gary Gygax is? He's the one that created all the books. Oh. He's the one that created Dungeons and Dragons. When he was on his deathbed, because he passed away a couple of years ago, a few years ago, uh, he, he wanted me to, he said he wanted me to tell his life story. Um, which is crazy for anybody that plays Dungeons and Dragons, <laughs> for Gary Gygax to say they want you to tell a life story. I played for many, many, many years, and in some ways, um, playing Dungeons and Dragons helped me in telling stories in Hollywood, because you have to think so far in advance. So with Hollywood, with even Fast and Furious, I could think three movies in advance. And a lot of that was because of my experience playing Dungeons and Dragons and having to think about a campaign so far ahead. Um, you really become a master of creating worlds. And I, I owe a lot to Dungeons and Dragons. Cool. And now you're back with Sander Cage. It's like 14 years since the first movie. Whose idea was that to, to come back with this franchise? His idea! <laughs> uh, it was, um, it, it took me seven years to decide to make another Triple X. It took me seven years to decide to return. And then it took me another seven years to make it a reality. Because uh, Furious 7, Fast and Furious 7 was so hard because um, of obviously the loss of my brother Pablo. I needed to do a movie where I could laugh again. I needed to do a movie where I could smile again. I needed to do a movie where I could just have fun. And 
that's what Triple X is. Triple X is, is a movie that brings fun back into the theater. You know, in the 80s and 90s, there were movies that you can go to that were just fun. But lately, there hasn't been a whole lot of movies where you could just have fun. And I needed it for my life. Uh, and now, because I needed it for my life and I did the movie, now the world's going to be able to have fun with this movie to play. And I don't know if you know that, but while I was doing my research, I found out that people love to put hair on you. Why? Like... <laughs> oh, God. That kind oh, of stuff. man. Oh, God. That's I was wondering which one would you... Like, this is a Trump one. <laughs> Look at the Trump one. Mary. Oh, God. That's Zoolander. A, oh, come on. That's so funny. Sparrow. Have you, you haven't seen I like seen Sparrow. This? I like Sparrow. With Black Widow. <laughs> Oh God! Why me? I, I put Vin Diesel on Google and that kind of That's came so up. funny. I like. Can I see it? Yeah. Look how funny this is, man. Which one do you like best? I like this one the best. <laughs> and the last thing I wanted, I saw you speaking "I Am Groot" in so many languages, but I don't know if you ever said it in Portuguese. So I brought you. I did say in Portuguese. Did you? Eu sou o Groot. Eu sou o Groot. Eu sou o Groot. Eu. I love her. Man, she's so fucking sexy. It's not, I can't do this interview. Look at her. Eu sou o Groot. Does anyone say this? <laughs> Guys, am, what's wrong? Am I the only one that's saying it? Look at her. She's so fucking beautiful. Thank it's you. like you can't even do an interview with her because you're just like. Da, 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 da. Right or wrong? <laughs> Oh my God, guys, someone save me. When did this turn into beautiful world? When did this turn into the most gorgeous girl in Brazil? When did this turn into I love you? Thank you so much. Thank you very much.